Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about iterators. Now, if you haven't seen the previous lesson introducing iterators and how they're used, please go ahead and check out that one as we're going to continue the discussion from here. And today we're going to be talking about iterator categories. That is the different powers that we get with the different types of iterators that exist, meaning depending on what data structure we have, can we traverse it in a uniform way forwards, backwards, or have random access, for example. So we'll go ahead and look at that in some of the different containers that we've covered. But first, let's go ahead and just do a little bit of a review of this concept here, looking at CPP reference. So I'm going to go ahead here and at the top right, visit the iterator library, where we're going to continue our discussion. So again, from the previous video, we learned that Iterators are a generalization of pointers or a pointer-like mechanism here that allows us to point to different data structures. So I want to go ahead and just key in on that a little bit, what that means here, just putting some pictures together here. Because again, we've got containers, and this is often the way that'll be shown here. We've got some sort of algorithm that we want to run here. And then the iterator sort of sits in between and tells us, you know, what subset of data, for instance, do we want to grab from this container here? And what algorithm do we want for it to operate on? And these are our iterators. Okay, so this is the range of data that we're operating on, or grabbing or inspecting from some container and operating some algorithm on it. So I'll go ahead and before we proceed to continue looking through the CPP reference, just do a quick example here to connect this with the code we looked at last time which was, well, if we have some vector like this, the simplest form of using iterators that we have is just to use some sort of range-based for loop. So that's literally looking at the vector. That's our container over here. And as we found, the range-based for loop here is an abstraction which gives us a pair of iterators to the begin and the ending of our collection here. So the whole range here. And then our algorithm is, well, whatever work we're doing inside here. Or if we want to really generalize this, this is sort of a for each sort of algorithm that you'll find in the algorithms library and we've looked at in this series. All right, so that's just, again, the basic idea here. So let me go ahead and get rid of some of this code from the last time here. But I do want to go ahead and focus in on uh, vector and some of the different things that we can uh, do with it. That's what we're going to look at here. So again, we've looked at range-based uh, for loops. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those for now, and we're going to want to just look at uh, a vector, for instance, and just have, say, the beginning iterator to it, and then we'll use the end uh, as well. Okay, so let's just kind of keep this in uh, mind here. And again, today's video is really about discussing and hopefully getting some sort of underlying idea of just how iterators are structured and the different sort of powers they have. We might need to talk about this a little bit more, uh, but I hope this will again give you some intuition about what we're doing. So anyways, this is sort of the diagram here, our container, our vector. Let's go ahead and just add there the range that we want to work on and the uh, algorithms that we will perform on it. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and continue here onto the next section, which is about iterator categories. Now, if you read through this, you're going to find that there's five or six kinds of iterators. <laughs> and what does that exactly mean here? And we're going to get this giant chart here with all these things beginning with legacy. Now, for now, just ignore the legacy in front. And let's just focus on this last part, output, iterator, input, forward, bidirectional, uh, random access, and then this contiguous iter iter iterator, excuse me, uh, which is the uh, latest thing here. So um, what exactly are these uh, different iterators and, and what does it mean here? And we have the different types of operations here that are supported here. OK, so can we write out data? Can we read data? OK, well, it looks like we can do that in most of the cases. Uh, can we increment our iterators um, over multiple passes or decrement them? OK, and let's see if we see something that's different here. So if I have a forward iterator, for instance, just looking at this chart here, doesn't look like I can decrement it. So maybe that means something or what this exactly means is we can only sort of move forward through our collection. And I'll show you a few containers where that's the case. Maybe you can think of one if you've been watching uh, this STL series here. 
And for instance, do we have random access? Well, then we need a iterator with the ability to give us random access so I can just jump directly to an element, for instance. So again, different iterators provide us different amounts of power, or I should rather say, depending on the container we're using, we'll get an iterator that will give us the ability to move forward or backwards or have random access, for instance. Now, a lot of ways that people kind of draw this, they sort of think of these iterator categories as a hierarchy. Uh, so for instance, uh, on a pyramid, you know, you have your output uh, and input uh, iterators. Okay, and I'll sort of separate them out here. Uh, and I'll draw it as a pyramid because we can kind of think of it like that in terms of, you know, each of these iterators giving us more power. And then if we have an iterator that allows us to move forward, well, that's sort of implicit again in uh, the ability if we're reading in data or, or writing out data, which we'll have to talk about with streams. Uh, so if I can move forward in one direction, that is, again, to sort of move through one element uh, at a time here. Uh, but sometimes I might want an iterator with even more power. So I can go bi-directional. So it means I could move forward by incrementing my iterator or backwards by decrementing it. And then at the top of the pyramid, I'll go ahead and just put um, the random access uh, iterator at the top here. Okay, and that covers most of our categories here. We do have this uh, contiguous iterator here, um, which, uh, let's see, it satisfies all of the, actually, it might actually be easier just to look here and say, that's the most uh, powerful one. Okay, we know we have continuous uh, storage. So you might think about this in terms of, um, and I'll have to look for sure, like a vec versus a, a vector, excuse me, versus a deck, which might, which is sort of contiguous, but does have maybe links between it. Uh, we'll have to look at that. Um, and actually I have vector open. Let's see if it does satisfy. Uh, it does have contiguous uh, container here. Okay. Didn't use to, but let's go ahead and look at uh, the deck here. Let's see if that one's considered contiguous. Let's see here, contiguous, I don't see it. So that's probably the distinguishment, uh, but not 100%. Sure, maybe somebody in the comments, a subscriber can let me know. All right, but anyways, that's just sort of the uh, hierarchy of the uh, power, if you wanna think about that, or the capabilities, which comes along with the uh, data structure that you're using. Okay, so let's try to make some sense out of this and just start using iterators and playing around with them a little bit here. Uh, with our vector, okay, for instance. So let's just go ahead and if I've got a vector to the beginning here, let's go ahead and just write out uh, from my iterator by dereferencing it, because it is this pointer-like thing, uh, the value that we're currently looking at, okay? So I'll go ahead and compile this. Let me just show you what I'm using to compile. Uh, there, it'll be the same every time. And uh, assuming it compiles, let's just go ahead and run it each time. And we get the value one. Okay, which is our first element here. Uh, that's great. Okay, uh, and then we can use, uh, let's go ahead, it++ here. And then let's go ahead and write out another element here. And then we'll see the value two. Okay, so we can move forward here. Okay, so what that's telling us here, uh, again, just looking at this chart and trying to make sense of these different iterator categories is, you know, do I have the ability to uh, increment here? Um, or decrement. Can I move forward and backwards? Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and uh, do this here. Okay, so so far uh, I can increment. I'm convinced of that. So, you know, just looking at what type of, you know, iterator am I getting back here? Or I should say, what's the underlying iterator that's been implemented for vector? What power does it have? Well, it looks like, you know, at the very least I can uh, read these values. Uh, can I write these values? Let's let's see here. Well, I guess I can I can change them. Let's see. Let's see if I can do that here. Um, it equals you know five. Okay, so whatever I'm pointing at, this pointer like thing, you're referencing it, and I'm changing. Okay, so I can write to that value uh, as well. Okay, uh, let's explore some of the other categories here. What if I uh, instead of uh, let's go ahead and do this step one more time here, but can I decrement it? Okay, so if I point my iterator backwards, so I go there, well, I'm going back to the first element here, right? One, that's this first thing, I increment, print out two, and then I move our iterator back, and uh, I have, you know, uh, moved backwards, okay? So that is uh, looking at our categories here. Again, this ability to decrement, okay? 
Uh, what if I just want to sort of move instead and do like plus equals three or something like that? Uh, and that would be the random access. So plus equals three from one, two, one, two, three. That does give me my fifth element here. OK, so that's the type of operations that are allowed here. OK, so just as far as reading these, you know, when you see this, um, the set of, you know, is this a contiguous, random or whatever, right? I have random access with a vector. So if I go ahead and let's go ahead and click on vector here. Uh, if I look at uh, iterators, uh, let's see the iterator here. And this is telling me the power here. OK, I'm able to get random access to this data structure. Now, again, why is this important here? Let me just go ahead and search it here. Random access uh, iterator, because this is telling me when I use dot begin or dot end, um, again, what power I have with this particular container. So you'll know, for instance, you look at iterator and say, OK, yeah, I can uh, randomly do point arithmetic, right? And if this is, you know, this is not the same as just moving forward three times, uh, right? When we have an array, just be clear when you're accessing an array, something like this, um, that is the equivalent thing of, right, dereferencing some array, uh, you know, um, and then adding uh, the actual like pointer arithmetic to it. OK, that's the idea here. OK, so we're getting a random access. Uh, the array notation between the brackets is just a shorthand for us. OK, um, OK, so a few different things uh, that I want to discuss in going with this. So we've sort of uncovered this power of what the different iterator categories are and what they allow us to do move forward, backwards. Uh, and again, really all that means is looking at the container and saying, can I do something like plus equal three? And if that's random access, I can you know, know that I'm accessing this thing in constant time. This is a you know, uh, operation that's available. But there are a few other things I'd want to talk about uh, with this here. So let's go ahead and say we have uh, something like a list here. So let's just look at uh, a list container. And again, reading through the documentation here, let's again sort of do that same search here, maybe iterator here. Um, and it says legacy bidirectional uh, iterator. OK, now I'm not seeing a random access here. OK, for list. So, I mean, let's just go ahead and prove it. And again, uh, one of the reasons we like the standard template library is we can just uh, include list here. And then I should be able to just, you know, change my data structure here. And let's just call this um, instead of vec here, let's just call this container. Again, just so it's generic here. Uh, and let, let's see what happens here. Uh, let's see. OK, so it says error, no match for operator plus equal. Uh, so we can't do this operation here. OK, All right, because we don't have random access. So that's the, the point here of this discussion. Now we do have, um, it says it's a bidirectional iterator. So we should be able to move backwards here, OK, in a list. Uh, and we can here, OK? Uh, and why is that? Well, again, remember, a list is uh, doubly connected so it can move backwards and forwards. So again, let's go ahead and try this experiment with something like forward list here. Uh, and we need to include the forward list header. So let's go ahead and include forward list. And let's change our data structure to uh, whoops, forward list, forward list, all right. Uh, and again, let's go ahead and see if this gives us any complaints here. It says, uh-oh, operator minus minus, uh, we can't do that, OK? And it's saying, OK, post fix, then maybe we guess and say, well, does it have a, you know, can we do a prefix? Nope, still can't do it. Uh, and we'll go ahead and look at the uh, iterator categories again for forward list. And I'll go ahead and uh, search. Uh, I've already got iterator here. And this is a forward iterator. So I can move this container forward. OK, so that's what this, you know, table is in this uh, you know, a blob of words is uh, basically saying here these these things that seem like they're long. Again, our categories, we're figuring out what is the uniform mechanism in which I can uh, investigate data from uh, beginning to end here. All right, folks. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. I hope that makes sense and hope that gives you some idea of um, just when you're choosing a data structure, 
and maybe thinking about how you're going to access and work with that data. Again, how to read these sort of different iterator categories and understand them and know what sort of iterator that you're getting. Now, later on, we will look at, for instance, writing our own iterators, and we'll have to think about this, um, how we work with things. So make sure you uh, check out those lessons that'll come later in this playlist. Or as always, you can just uh, sign up on my site, track your progress, and keep an eye out for that lesson there. So with that said, folks, thanks for your time and attention. I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.